Greetings my friends and welcome on back to another episode of Minecrafting with Ultra. I am Ultra and we're starting off today's episode in front of this here board because we're actually going to do one of these things today. That's right, I have thought ahead. Before we get into that though, I do want to show you something because I've selected the uh, the people who are going to stay in the inn here. And if we come all around here, it's fine, I work here, I can come in the, the employee section. So, I've got this book. Whoops. I forget that it sends a, a redstone signal, but first thing it says is, welcome to King's Inn, room and toilet. All visitors must register at front desk. Ring bell for service. The guest list on the next page includes, room one, shadow, has a bunk suite. Room two, Eduardo Delgado, coming through with one of the coolest names I've ever heard. Room three, we got my man Carson. Room four is my good friend Halords, again with another bunk suite. And room five, we have Doughboy. Page three says, enjoy your stay. We appreciate your patronage management. I did also put signs upstairs too. Each room is labeled with who gets to stay in them. Also not on the board, but bonus edition. We got my friend Quub here or QUB. I don't know. Quub, Quub. I don't know. I'm gonna call you Quub, but Quub said he just wanted in. So I have created here in our church, Quub's club, password required. And I don't know if you remember or not, but up in our ruined church, I built this little tree fort, kind of nestled away up here in the tree. So there you go, Quub. You want it in, you're in. Everybody else who's asked too, like I said, we'll get to you. Don't worry, don't worry. We've had a few people asking about uh, graveyards and a cemetery, and I've got something special planned. I think that we'll do, I'll try and have released for, for Halloween-ish over, over this way. But today what we're gonna do is build Mr. Matt Ranger a pub. You didn't ask for it, but you're gonna get it. And if we come right up here, I think I've got the perfect spot for it right over here. I think this area here is gonna be perfect. So what I'm hoping to do today is actually kind of walk you guys through this a little bit and explain my thought process instead of just doing the whole build in like a, in like a time lapse. So after laying out a bit of a path, connecting the area up to where I want to build, I started thinking about how I wanted this place to look. And I decided I wanted to have the bar kind of down on a lower level. I wanted it to be like a darker, dingier feel to it. And then I wanted to have the house kind of up above it, the, where the bartender would live, the guy who owns the pub. I wanted him to have a place that was connected to it, but also felt separate. And after I got a good outline of the rough shape that I wanted and positioning of everything, I set out with some framing. I know I said we weren't going to do a time lapse and this is kind of a time lapse, but this this doesn't count. Next up was filling in the walls and just getting a better idea of the, the, the sense of space that this thing was going to take up. I decided to go with dark oak for the house portion and stone for the actual like pub portion of it, but that might change here in a little bit. And uh, speaking of change, I started laying out the roof after that, just went with spruce on this one. and. I wanted the roof to look like it was sagging a bit on the house, but it just kind of ended up looking a bit too whimsical for the village. And I think I pulled that off, but it didn't really fit with what uh, I was going for here. So I tore it back down and I just went with something that was a bit more kind of straight up and down. I just went with stairs and gave it less of a curve and made it a little bit less tall. And it, I think it ended up fitting in a lot better. After that, it was time for some finer details. I started off by moving the door and punching some windows into the building. And then I just started filling in little bits and bobs here and there, little bits of texturing and things just to kind of tidy the place up and start to make it look like a more completed build. One of those things being thickening up the path and, and making sure it was good and connected up with the path to the rest of the village. And I also extended it out this way here. Uh, that way it could lead towards a future project. Plus I figured the path has to go like out of town, you know, it can't just stop. So it has to have somewhere to go. So it goes this way and then it stops. Turning my attention to the house park and digging out a bit of a basement so we have a place to keep our keep our, our ale and things like that. I also put the floor in on the house part of the build. That way it would be a little bit easier to maneuver around and, and finish filling out the windows, which speaking of, I realized I didn't like the ones on the bar part of the build, so I tore those apart and, and changed them. After that, I headed around back and started working out where I would put a chimney. And then we ender pearled our way up onto the roof here and started knocking some of it out to make way for some window dormers. I really love putting these things on, especially big flat roofs like this. I feel like they add a ton of character, trees in my way. After that, I went back to the bar part and put a dormer on that. This one being not quite as steep. 
And then I went back downstairs and completed the doors as well as the railing on the, the stairs going up to the house here. Finishing things up, we can't forget our window shutters as well as the ever important campfire overhangs. I feel like they really tie the windows together and make them look quite nice. Okay, now that we're here, we only have to do a few more things to finish this thing off, at least on the outside. One thing we'll do is put some coarse dirt around the edges in certain spots. A little bit of bush actions, never hurt anybody either. A little bit of bone meal goes a long way too. I don't like the tall grass in too many spots though. One or two every now and then is fine. There we go, that just does so much to actually just like set the build kind of into the landscape. Okay, just a couple things left and then we gotta head inside. One thing I wanna do is put a nice little flower box right here along where this hard line is, where the separation from the stone to the wood is just kind of abrasive. And what we can do is we can soften that up just by popping a little bit of bush action. And we're gonna put a couple of signs. I'm going with mangrove because I know Mr. Matt Ranger likes red. There, that's kind of a cute little flower box. I don't think we're gonna put anything along here because I think I wanna put a little bit of like a patio maybe with some outdoor seating. But around backside, we can always do something like this just to get a nice little pop of color back here. Actually, I wanna use the signs instead. On the house, I don't think we'll put any on this back side just because here is a little too close to the chimney. And this back window here is just kind of into the mountain. I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep that one. But maybe we'll put one here next to the door. That might look nice. And I think the last thing we'll do is hang a little signpost. Oop. Ugh. Maybe up here. Because we got to let people know exactly where they're at. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Pissing Ranger Pub and Grill. What do you think? I think it turned out pretty sick. We're not done yet though, we gotta go inside. Interiors are kind of tricky to do in Minecraft, I think. You're, you're, you're really limited with the amount of space you have and the overall size of the blocks. I think that when you're doing an interior, uh, one of your best friends is actually anything that's not a full block. Like cups, pickles, fence posts, pressure plates, things like that, trap doors, anything that's not, that it doesn't take up a lot of room is going to be your best friend. Also, when I'm doing interiors, I kind of tend to follow a philosophy of like just starting with what you know and working off of that. If you're not sure what to do in one area, but you do know what to do in another area, then start there and don't worry about the other area. Usually what I find is as you fill things out, doing what you are sure of, then the other things tend to kind of fill themselves in as you go. Also, another tip I would say is don't be afraid to change things. If you've if you've already built it, you've already put it down, don't be afraid to take it down and do it again if you're not happy with it. You don't have to settle for mediocrity. If you're if you don't like something, you can change it. The one of the reasons I like building in survival in Minecraft is because it forces you to spend a little bit more time with your build. Uh, it kind of forces you to be a little bit more intimate and think about the things that you're doing and, and the blocks that you're placing. And I think Overall, that helps give a build kind of a, a more lively feel. I don't know. I don't know if any of that made sense, but that's my, my attempt at some interior tutorial uh, tips. Another thing we can do with interior space is try and break it up a little bit. As it stands, this is a pretty big area to work with, but it ain't so bad if we break it up like, like this. And see, all I've really done here is just put in this little bit of a wall. I've sectioned this off so we have a bit of a bedroom here. I put some cross beams across the ceiling and I lowered the ceiling itself by using some upside down stairs. Now I've got something that's not so open and in my opinion is a little bit more manageable. There's a couple staples that I always go for when it comes to interior design and one of them is bedroom and another is kitchen and we'll have some sort of seating. Do those things and interior will be easy for you. Put in a couple of chairs maybe. Gonna need some cabinets. And don't forget the kitchen sink. Spots like this, I like to put trap doors just to make it look like it's got a little bit of a wall connecting it up. Over here by the stove, we can put another little counter. And maybe on that we can have a little knife and a little chopping block action. I don't really worry about the fact that the chair blocks it so you can't get back here because to me, like I just pretend that you can just slide the chair in, you know? Another thing we can do is just pop a nice little planter over here in the corner. And I like to fill it up a little bit so that it looks like that. And then we can do some bush. We're also going to need lighting and maybe a painting over here. I think that's pretty good actually for the kitchen. I think one more thing we'll do is we'll put like a shelf up there. Put our little, our little spice rack ladder shelf action over here. All right, I think we'll put a melon on the table and a couple of these trap doors just to make it look 
That kind of reinforced a little bit. And I might do it for the kitchen. And a little painting there, and I used some stairs here just to make it look like a little archway over the entrance. And I think that does it for the kitchen. As far as this little hallway section goes, we're not gonna put much, but I do think maybe by these windows we could do like a little bookshelf action there. Maybe even just one. And then on that, we'll put a little flower pot with one of these guys. As far as the bedroom goes, I think we'll put a little crafting bench over here. I need one, honestly. And then I think maybe just like more storage, maybe like another little shelf thing there. Actually, you know what? Better idea. We'll do like a big old bookshelf here, like this. And then we'll put a barrel up here for storage. And we'll just throw this other one out here in the hallway, why not? Okay, lighting, activate, bed, get better. Wall, too bland. Actually, you know what? Let's put it here, perfect. There, that's about it. I don't think we really need anything else. Actually, you know what? We do. We do need one more thing. We need a chest right there. Just one. Oh, the door. Bam. This has been Interiors with Ultra. Epic monologue complete. I'll tell you what's not complete though is all this out here and this episode. It should be. It's time when I should be releasing it now, but I haven't learned my lesson yet. So what I'm gonna do is finish this off in the form of a time lapse. I don't know why, but I feel like I get so much more done when I'm not trying to talk about it. But I got a lot done, and now I want to talk about it. So if we shum on over this way, we've got the new outside area for the Pissing Ranger. I thought it might be cool to include like some seating outside. That way, if you feel like, you know, if it's a nice day and you want to come outside and get turned up out here, you got that option. And then maybe say you've had a couple, couple ales too many, or maybe, maybe got into some bad pizza off the grill. We got a little toilet just across the just across the road here. Let's go inside and take one more look inside too. If we come in this door, this is the main entrance to the bar area. This would be where the customers would come in and hang out. You can see we've got lots of lots of cups on the tables. We've got these. I thought these were supposed to be like little pizzas is how I'm pretending they are. And then if you come back here behind the bar, of course, this is where you would come to place your order and get your drink and stuff. Bartender could stand here and he could get you a drink. He's got his little keg tapped here in the corner. And then of course you got your, your wood burning pizza oven here. We even got one here, hot and ready to go. Then if you come back around this corner, they got it kind of walled off. That way the, the general public doesn't have to see this area, but you've got a couple, couple of towels back here so you can dry your hands, dry the cups off. You can wash them here in the sinks. And around the corner this way through the door, you've got even more storage. And my thought here was this would be like kegs. And here's one that's like tapped and ready to go. And then same thing with these big round things. I thought they could be like big, like wine barrels. I don't know. And then this is supposed to be like wheat or something that they could use to like make their own like homebrew. This door here just brings you back out to the front. We go upstairs here. I added at the very end of the time lapse this little overhang here. I thought it looked kind of nice. It matched the, uh, the little picnic table down there. And going inside, I didn't change anything in here I don't think since last time you guys saw it. I did, I don't know if I talked about these, but I added like um, like a house banner or something. And we got the little kitchen over here, which I think turned out really nice. Of course, we've got the bedroom. I thought about making a double bed over here for, for, for Mrs. Ranger, but I figured y'all could snuggle. That's about it for inside the house here. And I think that's gonna be it for this episode, finally. I wanna get something cool out for Halloween for you guys, as well as the, the, the next episode. So I'm gonna try and actually work on two at a time. 
So we'll see how that goes. Wish me luck. If you guys are still here though, I gotta tell you, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I love doing this and I love the fact that other people are enjoying it as well. So if you did enjoy, maybe consider leaving a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you want to come back and uh, do this again. And I will see you guys next time.